In this episode of Mind Pump, we answer questions asked by listeners like you. Just like you. What they do is they post these questions on our Mind Pump Media Instagram page. We pick our favorite ones, and then we answer them. Now, in the first part of this episode, that's the introductory portion. That's where we talk about current events. We talk about our own workouts, studies that we found, um, and we have a lot of fun. So here's what we talked about in this episode. We start out by talking about... Our favorite bachelor meals. We talked about when we were yeah. when we were younger and far less, uh, I guess, knowledgeable or wise when it came to nutrition. And all the terrible things we did to our body. Nothing in the refrigerator. Then I talked about beet juice again. Beet juice uh, showed to lower blood pressure. Um, and I talked about Organifi's red juice, which has a lot of similar properties. So if you don't like the taste of beet juice, it is disgusting. Not going to lie. It's um, dirt. You could try Organifi's red juice, uh, which also has rhodiola. Rhodiola is an adaptogen supplement um, that can help your body deal with stress and adapt to exercise. Um, and Organifi is one of our sponsors. They make 100% vegan supplements like protein powders, the red juice I just Yay, talked, vegan. talked about, and more. If you go to Organifi.com forward slash mind pump and use the code mind pump, you'll get 20% off. Then I talked about my workout, the one that's making me so thick. The thickness. A bunch of C's after that. Uh, We talked about Adam's powerlifting routine. He's on MAPS Powerlift, and it seems like he's getting much stronger. I talked about the Jordan Peterson documentary that's available on Amazon. It was really good. Um, We talked about Disney Plus and the Mandalorian launch. Oh, yes. Justin literally is losing his mind. It's ridiculous. Adam talked about DoorDash and his experiences with DoorDash. Uh, we talked about the future of cars. Justin mentioned the Owl Box is going to be using to help combat his rat problem. And then I talked about San yeah. Francisco's new district attorney. Looks like they're trying to keep going downward. Then we get to the fitness portion of this episode. Here's the first question. This person wants to know if cardio is a waste of time if you're lifting heavy. So what are the benefits or detriments of cardio when you're trying to get stronger and lifting heavy. Next question, what are the benefits and disadvantages of doing barbell complexes? This is when you do exercise after exercise after exercise versus the traditional straight sets. Third question, uh, do you really need to eat multiple times a day, like five meals a day in order to see progress? And the final question, is it awkward when some of them, someone just asks one of us to be on their podcast? Short answer is no, but you'll get to hear us talk all about it in the end of the episode. Also, this month, MAPS Performance. This is our athletic-minded workout program. So you'll build muscle, burn body fat, but also work out more like an athlete. So it's more fun. There's more uh, focus on functional exercises, and there are mobility movements. That program is on sale all month long. It's half off, so 50% off. Here's how you get the discount. Go to MAPS Green. Dot com and use the code GREEN50, G-R-E-E-N-5-0, no space, for the discount. Ch- Chokey walked in. With she, salt. Hold on, she, she walks in, she goes, she goes, you guys need to light a candle in here. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, it smells just it? stuffy man meat. Bro, it's just, the... it's musk. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? It's, it's just, it's male. It's hot, like like breath air. Well, it's, it's the pheromone. Com- you know I mean? It's the complete opposite of our front office because our front office smells beautiful, like, like yeah. foo-foo. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah, it's very... Uh, this is how it goes. You know, you got the men's bathroom, you got the women's bath. It's a completely different environment. Justin said it's like the, he said it's like those hot dog things at 7 Eleven. Yeah. With the rotating hot oh, dogs. Gross. Rotating hot dogs that are just there forever. Oh. You know, then they're just dehydrated they're, and you're like, I don't oh. know about this. When was the last time you guys had like an emergency have to eat something and you ate something like that? Like, oh. an, AM, like an AM, PM hot dog or nachos? I don't like them. They're it must sweating. Have been a long road trip. I don't know hot dogs sweat. Why are they sweating? <laughs> they eat so much. Just constantly What's sweating. What's going on in there? I don't know who eats I, I feel for those like whoever goes in there and buys that. I'm not gonna lie though. As a kid, I ate them. Of course. Yeah, as a kid, I well, ate. you can I, eat anything. As a kid, when I, I was a kid, I ate everything. Terrible, but I yeah. I love. Hot dogs. I ate a whole thing of Pillsbury. You know, you know those big like <laughs> like sausage tubes. Like I ate the whole thing. Like walking just straight. Home. Dope. <laughs> yeah, I just ate the whole thing, <laughs> and I was fine. <laughs> How old were you? I was pro- I was probably twenty nine. Twenty nine. No, like you guys haven't, dude. <laughs> no, I, <didn't. laughs> I have. Such I assholes. have never <laughs> done that, bro. I've never, never eaten a whole sausage tube of Pillsbury. No. 
<laughs> chocolate chip cookie. No. <laughs> Come on, dude. dude you're all alone on this all right, one, bro. Listen. I mean, I want to be with you on this, yeah. but I'm just, you're there's, all alone. There's got to be some listeners who have my back on this. Hold on a second. You went to the store? <laughs> yes. And, and you had some money and that was the I thing was you like, bought? Uh, yeah, exactly. It's like, there's no parental, you know, <laughs> people like stopping me. So I'm going to eat the whole damn thing. So when you open the tube, it like pops. The, it, like the whole thing. coming out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> just a lot of dough. I you mean, just I, crushed it on the way up. Do you guys dough. remember like the first, like your first either dorm room? Because Justin, I know you went off to college with that, or your first yep. apartment or house that you got into. Sal, like how you stocked the fridge and the cabinets. Like, do you remember uh, what you stocked oh, it with? Dude, I got stupid. I got shredded. You know why yeah. I got so shredded? Yeah. I ate tuna fish. Yeah. In sandwiches, in yeah. the occasional bowl of cereal, I yeah. just got ripped. I had yeah, I had frozen chicken breasts and like all condiments. Like that was it. Yeah, that's, <laughs> Everything I could put on a George Foreman grill. That's true. Every that guy's fridge is like that, right? Yeah. You open it up and it's like there's ketchup, relish, yeah. mayonnaise, yeah, relish, yeah. There's no barbecue food, sauce. There's no food. Yeah, what about and, you? And beers. Uh, a Mike lot, and Ike's a lot of uh, yeah. I had a lot of candy for sure because I talked about how, my candy addiction. But I had. Uh, a lot of frozen burritos, a lot of frozen corn dogs, a lot of hot pockets. Oh, bagel bites, yeah. Top ramen and those. canned raviolis. I mean, that was- Oh, canned ooh. raviolis? Yeah, the big one that oh, was that, like- Oh, that hurts like his Italian 1,500 heart. Yeah. calories, the Chef Boyardee ones. Oh, you know, and you know what? You know what, how, how I justify that? It was like 70 grams of protein. Yeah, I know, dude. Uh, to eat the whole can. I feel like I'm going to start crying right now thinking about that. <laughs> you know what happened if I ate a, a Chef Boyardee anything in front of anyone in my family? Oh, yeah, it get, get hit. Yeah. That's what would happen. <laughs> I'd, get, I'd get hit in the face. Yeah. If I did something. That's what I used to do. It's I used not to go well. I used to judge food. Now, this is when I got, I was still a kid. I was just a little older. So I'm like late teens. This is when I'm like, oh, protein builds muscle. Therefore, that's the num That's the only <laughs> guiding principle totally. for mm -hmm. anything I ate. I remember buying a box of pasta, looking at the box of pasta, like, dang, it's like 50 grams of protein in this whole box of pasta. Yeah. I just eating the whole eat the whole thing. Eat yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. You know gotta what I mean? Got to get it all. That's when I figured out nuts had some protein. I'm like, pfft. Peanuts. That's oh, I used doing. to keep in yeah. my drawer, even as a trainer, I, was, I kept a, a big jar of peanuts and I just all day long, I used to just take handfuls of it. <sighs> because was, this was back when I couldn't get enough calories in, right? So it was like, this was one of the ways I got calories is I get one of those big jars of, of peanuts and just throughout the whole day between clients, I'd throw handfuls in my mouth. Oh, yeah. did you guys ever go to Hometown Buffet? I did for a little bit. But, oh god, it's disgusting. So yeah, we used bad. to stack plates, dude, when we were playing, you know, football and we go on the road, especially we go to those buffets and that was like the thing. It, it was like a competitive thing. Competitive eating. Like you would stack like my roommate, I always tell you guys about how big he was. I mean, he was like almost 4 in pounds. You would stack like 10, 12 plates and it was just disgusting. Oh, yeah. I used to do set we would do rounds, so we would do sets. So we'd go through the food then we go to the because they always had the soft serve ice cream. So then we would eat the, the ice cream, and then we would all just take a breather. They can't kick you out, you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah. So then we would just chill for like an hour, <laughs> and then we do the oh round two, okay, and then we do it again. Uh, it's and it's weird for me yeah, to they even hated us. I don't even know why I have gut issues now. It's really strange. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what could have caused that. Those, yeah. Some of those problems. Right? You know, after the one of the last episodes we just did, I, I've been getting a bunch of DMs. I don't know why people DM me stuff about something. Does this happen to you guys? You guys get DMs about something that one of us, the other person says, like someone, Sal will say something, and I don't know if that and they are, think it's you. I don't know like, if they think uh, it's me or not. Or they but you talk show. Yeah, well, they asked me a question that's like something that you talked about. Like it was, uh, I was getting questions about the beet juice that you were you were using. Like, oh, what beet juice did Sal say he used? I'm like, I don't fucking know. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, d I listened. Actual beet juice. I listened to it the one time you listened to it and i have no idea ask him that <laughs> dude I, i've been doing it in the morning and uh it legit works and i've been doing more research do you know that beet juice has been clinically proven to significantly lower blood pressure so forget working out and performance wow. for people who want to lower blood pressure it actually low it, it actually because it boosts nitric oxide now, so well is, is some of this information relatively new because i this uh, when i think about all the things that i remember hearing about that were popular in bodybuilding and training and stuff like that i, I don't ever remember people talking about beet juice it was never really popular because it's yes it is relatively new that it does that it has that we know that it really has this effect but the, the initial studies were done on endurance athletes so endurance athletes have been supplementing with uh, like beetroot uh, or beet juice powder mm -hmm. for a while now. It's been around for a long time. While it's, meaning like longer than we were trainers or a while like in the last decade? No, I'd, yeah, last decade. Okay, so yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. Like I, I don't remember early on like anyone ever talking about beet no, juice. No, there was one study that came out that showed how it improved uh, athletic performance, endurance. And it, it was a significant improvement. And so then everybody started, you know, all the endurance athletes started taking it. And then the bodybuilders didn't really be, become privy to it until they started realizing that it raises the one of the ways that it improves performance is through its nitric oxide boosting 
yeah. properties. And it boosts, I mean, according to studies, it's the most effective way to boost. So if you take like a pre-workout or like a NO pump, whatever, you know, Arginine, citrulline, beet juice or beet juice powder, like Organifi's red juice, uh, that's a lot of that. The reason why it's red is it's got beet uh, juice powder in it, um, which is actually better because it tastes better. Here's the drawback to beet juice. Yeah. F I can't do it. Ooh. It's gross, dude. I have to cut it. It's like dirt. Now I have to cut it with red. a lot of water. Now, is it. that like pretty much most all their their red juices or does it have other th other things? In it's it got that? other stuff and it's got rhodiola in there also. Uh, so okay. rhodiola is a very, uh, one of the number one most uh, studied or backed by, st by studies um, adaptogenic uh, pro uh, supplements. So it helps the body deal with stress. It's also an energy producing supplement but it's not a stimulant. So if you're sensitive to caffeine, but you do want energy, um, a lot of people respond really well to, to rhodiola. Rhodiola was heavily used by the Soviets. Mm. The Soviets uh, made a big deal about uh, about rhodiola. For now, is this is this common that we see this in uh, the the you know the pre workouts that are stimulant free? Is this what typically what is in it? Like when you look at just not just Organifi but all brands, is this what's common to see in a a, a natural pre workout without any stimulants? Well, you'll see because you know you also have things like, like uh, cordyceps. Or? Yeah, you also have things like pomegranate juice also boosts uh, uh, you know boost performance, boost the pump. Um, there's these, these, these really, really red, deep red, uh, uh, type of fruits or vegetables seem to have a lot of these properties, beet being one of the, but the number one ones. Um, some of them will include them. Some of them don't. Some of them that are stimulant free will have things like cit citrulline, beta alanine, which also have, you know, some stuff supporting them. Um, but I like, I like the, the natural stuff. You know what I mean? That's, yeah, yeah. that seems to be the best for me. Um, but I tell you what though, I need to like step back for a second with the whole, like bulking thing. It's time for me to. <laughs> I saw your. Are, are you hitting? A, I uh, saw your story. That was uh, the, the saturation the point thickest, here. Or what? The thickest I've seen you in a while. It's man. a little. I'm a little. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's going too far. Now it, I need to reverse that. Uh, I bet your I'm girl likes it in. more. Does your girl like you more like she that? She does. Yeah. So does Katrina. She does. Yeah. Katrina would rather me be like almost. Do you think now? Do you think it's reverse cycle? Or do you think they're saying that because? You know what I mean? They want us to get yeah. a little, little rounder so that I we don't get. There's a little bit of that. Yeah, yeah I, they're I, trying to not be like, no, you know, don't don't go too far. Yeah. yeah. Well, I <laughs> yeah. think for I think for my girl, it's because she's she's not small. She's five eight. You know, Katrina walks around lean at one fifty if she's even soft or thick at all. One sixty, so she's not a tiny little girl at all. Mm. And so I think does she like it when you give her weight out on air like that? <laughs> <laughs> She's in phenomenal Bonus shape, points. so she, she does not mind. She's in incredible shape. I mean, shit, she sometimes she, she, she yes, yeah, sometimes she dunks lower than I do. I can't believe how uh, low her body. She's it's uh, she's one of those people though that um, you know she'll dunk at 11, 12 percent body fat and still not see like really defined abs. So she's kind of the 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 opposite. She's an athlete. You know that that yeah. that, that 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 is one of the reasons why men store body fat in their trunk and not on their lower body is because it keeps our limbs free. For uh, for like hunting activities. or activities <laughs> for activities, yeah. Yeah. that's the way we evolved. Unlimited, and of course, women have babies, and so the, the the lower body, the body fat in the lower part of the body, just balances out their center of gravity. But you'll notice this with really really high performing female athletes; they'll have less of the the waist to hip ratio type thing. Yeah, it'll be a little bit more straight, and if they store body fat, sometimes it'll be more in the midsection. Yeah, that's her. Mm -hmm. That's definitely her. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. If you the, you think that it has something to do with that, I wonder if the, I mean she was a D D one. Yeah, yeah. No, she's been an athlete her whole life, and so uh, and 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 had older brothers that she were were pushing her at a very young age. Mm -hmm. So maybe you know, I mean, that's an interesting. So she theory. likes you heavier too, huh? Yeah, but so my theory on it is that it does make her feel smaller, mm -hmm. right? I mean, she she. I mean, when you're a girl who walks around at one fifty, one sixty, and five eight. You probably aren't a big fan of having the the boyfriend or husband that's you know five ten and one seventy five, and you guys are close mm -hmm. in weight, right? Yeah, so yeah, I think yeah. they, I think she likes feeling uh, more secure in my arms mm -hmm. and me being bigger just and bigger. more, yeah, yeah just bigger in general, right? That's so what, it is. what yeah, about yeah. you, Justin? Yeah, she likes it when I'm bigger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you said that creepy though. How, I don't know. <laughs> bigger. How, how, how tall is how tall is Courtney? <laughs> Yeah, so she's uh, about five eight. So she's so her pretty and Katrina tall. Are, yeah, yeah, she's pretty tall. Uh, and Jessica's way small. She's like five three, right? Yeah, five two, five three. Oh, she's even shorter. Than yeah, five, three. she's yeah. A, she's a little thin. But yeah, you're right. Like she does. Like she's. I mean, she's glad that I'm six foot, but I like 
you know, the fact that I can be a bit bigger. So it doesn't, yeah, I think it shrinks her down a bit. That well, way. I, I haven't been this cause I'm like two twelve maybe right now. I haven't been this heavy or this strong in a very long time. And what's happening is, uh, I, I, I'm, you feel good though. Don't you? Well, I, I injured myself a couple times now uh, because, uh, because I'm getting so strong. Um, my ability to stabilize isn't catching up. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and I'm trying to be careful. I'm still trying to be careful, but I can rip some weight now. And I'm like, okay, I've noticed it. that too, but it, it, you start, it starts creeping back in the aches, the pains and things that I'm kind of dealing with to try and, you know, mobilize and recover. Like the recoveries become like way more important. Well, now. remember I told you I hurt my QL on my left side. Mm -hmm. So that healed up, right? Yeah. Right side. Boom. Pull that one the other day. <laughs> now the yeah. other one. Yeah. 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 So I, I'm on week three, right? I just started week three of power lift. And I remember telling, I think you guys asked me after the, uh, I think the first full round and I was into the second round last time and I was talking about how um, I was going to boost my calories and I was a little bummed about my, my chest day. I didn't think that I was progressing. My legs did really, a deadlift day, squat day, definitely uh, progressed there, felt good. Uh, didn't, I felt, I thought I had felt a regret, well, I, th uh, I was, I thought I was for sure <laughs> until I went back and I was tracking uh, it's because I've been logging all my numbers, what mm -hmm. I'm hitting rep wise, and what weight I'm doing. I didn't realize that the first week that I I was working out and I had started with 200 pounds on the bar, and I I jumped to 220 to 221 because I I I, uh, I didn't realize what I had put on there uh, the first time mm. when I went through the program, and the second time, uh, the second round I had put. So on, you are stronger. Yeah, so I was because and so because I I fell a rep or two shorter than the previous week. I was, I was telling you guys on air that I was like, uh, yeah, I'm a little disappointed in my my chest workout because I I didn't feel stronger. Maybe it was my and I was alluding to maybe it was my calories. Yeah. But then when I went back this third time and I'm entering my numbers and then I went I was going back and I've been videoing a lot of my my progress too just to like watch my form and everything mm -hmm. like that. So I've been kind of picking apart everything. And I looked, I'm looking at the video, I'm like, oh, fuck. Yeah. I slid on the blue one instead of the yellow one the second time. Like, no wonder it was hard for me to get seven reps out. Yeah, and we got to get ones that are pounds. Like, we got to get rid of this whole kilogram uh, thing. I know. Who's, I know. That, who's, who's the asshole that did that? Yeah, whose idea was yeah, that, Justin? that was me. <laughs> <laughs> at first, I'm like, you know, it's kind of nice because then you don't really know, like, oh, wow, what I, I'm actually capable of a lot more. You know, I was like tricking myself. Yeah, yeah. But that... Quickly fade. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying yeah. to do math when I work yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck, man? I know. I'm just trying I know. to listen. Little yeah. brain busters as you're going to work out. So, yeah, out. no, I'm, I'm uh, so making- So you're up, though, huh? Oh, yeah, definitely. Great progress. And I mean, and now on uh, week three, you're doing uh, five. So it's the first week, you're only doing three sets. The, the second week, you're hitting four sets. The third week, I'm now up to five sets of bench. Uh, and I was moving more more weight for more reps and, then on, and more total sets. So I was able to increase volume significantly- uh, and and felt pretty damn good. So I'm really excited to see. I'm and I know this, and because of uh, how, how many times I've ran or gone through a, a program, is you know the week four to six area is normally when you really start to see the yeah. big gains. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I'm I'm really excited about this next this next coming week after this week if w what I'm going to feel and see. So yeah, normally I love. So I've been going through powerlift as well. And normally I love to like have interactions with the kids and, and Courtney coming down and kind of like saying hi and like doing their reps and stuff beside me uh, at, at home. And now it's like at a point where I'm like lifting like significant weight again. And I'm like, oh yeah, I, I can't stand when anybody's near me. Uh, when I'm lifting this kind of weight, because all I'm thinking about is like, hey, don't jump around. You're too close. And yeah, this and that. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, and so, yeah, I've been real snappy with it. And I'm like, I probably shouldn't do this here anymore. Oh, different yeah. mindset. Different, right? totally different. Yeah. I was what Justin was benching here the other day, and I was uh, over by the closet. So it's a decent distance away, but I kind of could see what he was doing. And he hit a rep there that was, it was a little iffy, man. He was like, I had, kinda, <laughs> and I'm like, I was, do I need to, I was struggling. Dude, like, do I need to run over there? To I had it? that yesterday and nobody nah, was, I got it. the only reason I got it up, I think was it went, definitely my form went on the last rep because it was like, none of you were here yeah. <laughs> no. and I was going to have to lay the bar back down on my oh. chest. So I got There's it. no easy way to get out of the bench press. <laughs> yeah. that, that one is like, oh shit. How many times have you guys had to do that? Oh, Maybe I would say a handful of times, five times. Probably. Yeah, I, yeah. You, and you just what you do, you bring the bar. I've, I got good at it because I used to do it all. Roll the time. yourself out like dough. Roll yeah. it down <laughs> your sucks, stomach, which fu when you're getting strong, it doesn't feel good to know. <laughs> so it's, it's like foam rolling, it's like, but with a metal oh, bar right, right against the hip. Oh, yeah. and then you got to sit up with him. You know. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. The first time I, <laughs> the first time I did that was with 135. It was the first time I ever benched with 135, and I was in my backyard. 
And I remember I did a few reps or two reps or whatever. I got stuck and I'm like, Ugh! and I'm yelling at my mom. Oh, well, you know, she can't hear me because she's in the house. So I put it down on my chest. I keep yelling. She doesn't hear me. I'm like, fuck. I roll it down. But then what ended up happening is when you rolled it down, I rolled it and it like pinched the top of my Ooh. wing, bro. Oh, yeah, because Oof. it was. You know, Ugh. kind of pointing up a little bit, and I'm like, Ugh. "Bing!" Yeah, it took that bad boy down. Yeah, yeah it yeah. wasn't. It wasn't good. This was. This explains which, <laughs> why Justin said it looks weird, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was yeah. really confused. It's last like time you showed me. <laughs> it got swollen and never yeah. went down. <laughs> That's really strange. Yay. Anyway, dude, have you, have you guys watched the Jordan Peterson documentary? No, no, no. I watched the trailer and was like, and so you actually watched the whole thing. I watched the whole thing. Yeah, it's How actually. Was it? It's you know what? Not bad. Yeah. I was so I was afraid. I mean, we've seen so much of his. We've read his book. Like, did, did you feel like you got anything new out well, of it? Well, so here's the thing with it. I, I, he has to be one of the most misrepresented people I've ever seen. Right? Like, it's crazy that people like like hate him the way they do. It's, it's, like, it's what doesn't it make sense? To yeah, me? he's painted in a particular way that's completely not accurate. I've, I've seen uh, you know hundreds of his videos. I have yet to see anything that would make me think that this person is a that he's a bad person that he's you know sexist or racist or all the other stuff that they throw at him. Uh, but he is a complicated individual. Mm -hmm. you, you understand that about him. He can be very emotional at times. You've seen him on the on certain podcasts or interviews where he just you did that with the Bishop Barron interview where he yeah. you know he would cry. He's talked about being depressed. He's got an interesting house. Well, he seems. Have you seen the inside of his oh, house? No. The paintings and everything. Oh, I did see the. Yeah. I saw the preview to that. He's got tons of really cool art. Soviet era um, propaganda paintings. Wow. So here's a man that studied, uh, you know, the, the communism and fascism and just totalitarian um, regimes. And the reason why he studied them, obviously, he's he's a he studies humans. This is his passion. He wanted to figure out why humans have done such terrible things mm -hmm. to each other, especially in the 20th century. But then it's strange that in his house, he's got a massive five foot, you know, painting of Lenin, you know what I mean? And other yes. paintings. And it's, but I think he just became, he's, he's just obsessed with his, his work, but it's very interesting. Well, I mean, Justin has tattoos of like demons and shit on himself, right? That's what yeah. you did. So it's like, right. maybe he's just, my parents yeah. loved that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why would you have to put the evil one in front? Yeah. <laughs> do you really like, have a tattoo? A demon on yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, right here, dude. Really? Yeah. yeah right there. Why would you do that? Because on the back you have, I mean, it, it's it's the whole duality thing. It's it's good and evil. It's I acknowledge that both exist. Mm. And you know, and it's art. It, it this is the art I was drawn to as a kid when I was sitting in back like at church and everything, and I'm like looking through these. It was like Dante's. Oh yeah, you know, like all those types of things. Like I was just very much drawn to the spiritual end of everything. Like because to me that was like okay, if you believe it, like you're believing in these types of things too. And like, what does that even that's, look like? That's it's a like, very good point. I just was very much fascinated with what people didn't want to talk about. That's a very very good point. Well, this documentary was, uh, I'm going to be honest, it was pretty in the middle. I think it was a non-biased documentary. It wasn't like a pro-propaganda you know, film uh, for Jordan Peterson. It wasn't this anti- film of, of Jordan Peterson. It kind of showed who he was. It showed the who did it? complexity. I don't I don't I don't know who the person was. It, was. was it done by him and his no, team? No, no, no. Someone no. did did it uh, Yeah. Uh, but it was uh like I said it you could you could you really kind of understand the complexity of that kind of person, the weight of what he had gone through or, or what he's going through. Um, it's very, very, very interesting. Very interesting person. I think he's more of a, of a sign of, you know, uh, changing times. Like there's a lot of young men that do like him, but I think it's because there's a lot of young men without dads and don't have that, you know, that direction. And then he's kind of that, that type of figure, you know? It shows you how different all of us so much are. It's so hilarious that this is what you're watching. It's like uh, Monday was the, the game of the year in football oh, with, with so Seattle amazing. and Niners, right? Most, I mean, I hated the outcome, but it was amazing. Yeah, mm -hmm. one, of the, one, of the, one of the best games go down. Uh, the, the, it'll be talked about for years. The Seattle um, Super Sharks? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Super Sharks. So that was going, that was going <laughs> on. And then yesterday was the official launch of Disney Plus and Apple Plus TV. And... I mean, I was so stoked to watch Mandalorian, and that was fucking oh, fire. It was, it was epic. I, I signed up. Man, I was I, I, like secretly because it had like some people were kind of trying to compare it to Game of Thrones. I think everybody's trying to compare themselves. That's like the new standard of, uh, you know, you're creating a, a show with all this content, like mm. and put a lot of money towards it. And so I was like, uh, like half of me was hoping it was going to be like, like they're like hour plus long shows, you know. And so yeah. this was a little bit shorter, but. 
uh, man, they did such a great job. I was, I was like stoked uh, as, a, as a you know, a super fan, if you will. Like yeah. I, I went back and was like researching like all the different ties that they were kind of pulling together, the Easter eggs and everything. So yeah, dude, I was, I was pumped on like how this is, you know, where it's set, like you know, the environment. So like, this is, you said this is before, this is after the Clone Wars, but before. No, so this okay. is actually after uh, Return of the Jedi. And so after like the the fall of the empire, and so like he's kind of going around and uh, like oh. I, I mean I can't give away like because spoilers some people haven't like watched it yet but like the end they reveal something that's really interesting yeah it makes you kind of wonder makes like, you wonder yeah like what wh where oh, they're gonna go with it from there but yeah. like. Yeah, like Solo, you know, the movie, I didn't really, really like it. They brought back, and so if you haven't seen it yet, you know, you're, I mean, it's tough, dude. I'm going to talk about this. Um, <laughs> but they, they they brought back uh, Darth Maul, and I was just like, what? Like, why? Like, he got cut in half. Like, what are we doing here? You yeah. know, now you're going to put, like, little robot legs on him and all this shit. And, like, so now they're making this whole, like, underground, you know, like, basically like a, like a criminal ring that he's created and then like infiltrated and became like, like, uh, you know, another part of like this whole government conspiracy thing. That's like creating a whole nother sub story. That's that they're tying into the Mandalorian. I it's, think it's was, you know, was, how fascinating was it to see our boy Tate, the first like five yeah. minutes yeah. opener. He's like the whole opener in the first five minutes. Yeah. I saw a little bit of that. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah. yeah. That was cool. great. I have dude. no idea what language he was speaking, but I was like, Oh, this is great. Yeah. I I watched no. uh, the Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty came out with another season. Did you guys watch that? You know that song? They did? Yeah. Oh, I'm going to have to check that they're, out. They're now part of the, the oh. Disney Plus and Apple Plus. So when I have Disney Plus, do, is it automatically give me all the Apple Plus stuff on there? Or do I have to go on a different No, no, no. See, yeah, that's the, they're different, right? So they're, Apple Plus is doing a, a bundle that I... And I don't, Shit, I just signed up for Disney Plus by itself. I'm sure you could probably get it all bundled together if you want to. So they have a deal where it's uh, Disney, I believe HBO, and Apple Plus all together for like twelve ninety nine, or you can do a la carte for like six ninety nine for Got each it. one if you make maybe you don't want HBO but you want the two of those. Because so I already have HBO. Yeah. Yeah. So do I. So I'm, I got to look into seeing how. I mean, we're talking about a few dollars you save, but you save it. Um, but did you see how many subscribers yesterday? No. You guys no, didn't see? What, no. Yeah, no. What was the number? You want to take a guess? Uh, it's first day. Uh, okay, first day. Millions. 10 million. Ten? Wow. 10 million subscribers. Wow, wow. that ad must have helped them a lot. Now, hold on a second. To TV? Disney Plus. And what is it? What is it? What is the trial? Six ninety nine. It's six ninety nine. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Right out the gates. Yeah. Sixty million dollars. Basically seventy million dollars. Right. If out. they stick. If they all stick, right? Yeah, Because yeah. that's the trial period or whatever. Right, right. I mean, what would you think? I mean, I think everybody who signed up signed up to fucking use it, right? I doubt you signed up to just. Oh, maybe, maybe some people wanted to, but I tell you what I was, so I went, I went through all of it, right? I even went through Apple plus, uh, of course I, because I've been talking so much shit about watch what these guys do and boy, I tell you what, man, they're, they're Apple original series. So I got hooked last night. I couldn't fucking stop watching the, the new one with, uh, um, Jennifer Aniston. Mm. And you said her name right. Wow. I did. Well, Thank yeah. you. I, I like the old way you pronounce it. Yeah. Yeah. Anastan. Yeah. Anastan. Anastan. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Steve Carell and uh, Reese Witherspoon. Um, they have a show out called um, the The Morning, The Morning Show. Mm. Hell oh, good. I saw the. I saw really the commercial good. For that. Really, really good. Dude, I'm telling you, this is the this is how TV is going to be. Remember, remember a couple years, a few years ago. When well, I so it, so what Apple right, what, what Apple is trying to do. Thing. Okay, yeah. so yeah. I, I watched a whole video on this. So what Apple's trying to obvious. do different than yeah. all the rest of them is there, and that's why they they partnered with Disney. They partnered with HBO. Is you don't have to leave their platform. So like right now, if you have a favorite show on Hulu, you have a favorite show on Amazon, you have a favorite show you on Netflix. Switch over. You got to switch over. Well, Apple Plus is is if you want if you have Apple Plus and Disney and HBO, it all can is all lives under Apple Plus. So you don't have to go out of that app mm. to go to all these shows. And if you were to search the top sure. your show, it just goes directly to that, and you're and you're and you drive right. So here's what I foresee: um, yeah, I foresee a an app that you can get on your TV that'll do that for you. So you'll be able to go to this app; it'll have access to uh, all of these other apps, and then you'll be able to go through each show. So it just remembers your login and it, all that. And it'll it show you, like, it. yeah, like oh, here's on this is on Amazon, but yeah. it's also on Netflix or here, you know, and then you'll be able to choose which one you want. That's what I think is going to happen. Mm -hmm. and, if, and, and I'm sure that there's 
that they're trying to prevent that or whatever. Yeah, but you'd I have just, to have an, you'd have to have an open API to do that. I don't know if all of them do or not. I have no that, idea yeah. what the tech is like, but I I foresee that happening. But this is the future of of entertainment. You're gonna get. It's going to be all a cart, and it's it's and it's great. It gives you lots of choices, and people say, "Oh, it's it's more money." It's not more money. It's more money if you yeah. buy everything, mm-hmm. but if you really only watch what you pay for, it's actually a lot Are there less. People money. still watching like regular cable. Yeah, yeah, no, a lot of people. Isn't still. that crazy? Yeah, and I guess so. I guess oh, Comcast. Like, well, you can't, that's where you watch oh, your like sports. So, isn't that how you watch your sports ball so games? Com- oh, I watch yeah. it on YouTube TV. No, I stream uh, it. I stream it through Sling. Oh well, now it's done. So, uh, well, I guess and maybe Doug, you can look this up. I believe. Uh, Comcast, check out the name of this. Comcast is coming up with their own streaming service. So they're putting their name in the hat. They uh, have to. Yeah. Uh, Comcast is, and then who else did I read? I will is also not do that out of spite. See, so what I think is <laughs> yeah, going to so what I think is going to happen is because and, and this is why I still disagree with your a la carte theory, is that it's going it's so many people are gonna go a la carte that eventually one of the big dogs, whether that be Netflix or Amazon or uh, Apple are going to swoop up and buy all the small ones and just bring it underneath. Nah, the, uh, won't happen. Uh, yeah, see, I that think never happens. It never happens in markets. For example, okay, has a big uh, cereal company bought all the cereals? Or yeah, General Mills. Yeah, but they don't own all of them. Well, I mean, they own Post, they, maybe. They, yeah, the Post yeah, and General Mills. Yeah, 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 you're going the wrong direction. No, 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 no. You said one. Yeah, you're, you're. I think you're right that there may be big investment companies, but all these small companies going to remain that way, and competition well, continues they'll, to. They'll buy all the ones that matter. Yeah. You know, HBO, Showtime. You know, they'll buy all. Yeah, the that ones. might happen, but I don't, it's not going to monopolize into one. No way. There's going to. So it's, it's too oh, easy to compete. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe they'll be. It's not that easy, actually. The amount of content and money you have to have to be able to do. That. Well, what I mean is it's much easier than it ever has been to compete. Like before, you know, if you had a cable, if you paid for cable, cable controlled it. That was it. Now you have internet access. You can you can go to all these different people if you it's want. It's crazy how, so, it's how mm. so many of these models, too, are, are not built off of making a lot of money right up front. Now, I don't, I, the, you know, like- a, They're like, trying to win yeah, the freaking- Yeah, get your attention Yeah, first. like the Uber Eats and the DoorDash. Like I was, I got hella pissed at my DoorDash the other day. Did we they had, fuck up again? Yeah, you know, and I, I use it a lot, right? You know so, they eat your French fries, right? Yeah, I know, dude. Oh man, I know you can. You know, so now companies, what they're doing? So like when you order from places, they they'll put like a a, a tape seal thing on the bag, so that doesn't, so you know oh, if they broke the seal or whatever like that. Because <laughs> I think that's probably been a complaint. Just imagine some guy scratching himself and this. Yeah. But I had yeah. this. I, so we had somebody who uh, didn't speak very good English and didn't know the area very well and you know katrina ordered five guys and we were waiting for it to get it was like 40 minutes to get to our house and you you can see them on the map and so i i see her like fucking you know nine minutes away oh 11 minutes away now oh six minutes away oh now 15 minutes away like just forever ice cold but yeah by the time it gets there it was completely cold they pulled up to my house and it was actually like a little and was, i was so i was heated right i was, I was so mad hungry over, yeah yeah i'm hungry and we've been waiting forever we're trying to watch we're getting ready to watch mandalorian it's like okay we're gonna sit down and it's a little hamburger night and fucking watch a show right we're all excited <laughs> yeah and so it's a good night yeah I'm, and so we're all prepped and ready to watch the show and our, our order takes literally like 45 minutes longer than what it should to get to us and I'm like so upset about, and Katrina's already filed a complaint and, you know, getting half our money back and stuff. <laughs> and I'm telling her, fuck it, let's she's order. She's on top of it. Yeah, 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 no, she's all she's over it, right? Around. Yeah, yeah. So she she gets half our money back right away. And I'm like ready to like give the, the, the driver a piece of my mind. Like, why are you doing this if you don't fucking know the area and you don't speak English very well? Like, I'm pissed, right? So pulls up like it's a family. And the it, the it, the person that who we thought didn't speak very English, it was a 12-year-old girl that was talking to Katrina on the app. And she gets out to hand the food to me. And the dad's Man, driving. Like an yeah, and there's yeah. like a baby in the car seat in the back seat. They all live in the car. Yeah, I don't oh, know. Uh, they had, no, they had a nice what? car. They had a nice car. Hmm. But it was like, w- that's such a random thing that you have, uh, you know, dad, 12 year old daughter, and then you have the baby in the back and you're oh, running DoorDash. Oh, maybe door he dashing. didn't have a babysitter. I, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know. But it, like, it definitely, I didn't say shit. Yeah, of course not. Yeah, yeah. Just, I just took my food and said, thank yeah. you. Hey, tell your dad. <laughs> yeah, we took asshole. your Happy Meal yeah. uh, toy. So. Yeah. yeah, tell your dad, yeah. you know, I know he's working hard to support you guys, can't afford a babysitter and all that stuff, but he's a jerk. <laughs> my burger's cold. So I had a, this reminded me actually of a story I wanted to t- share with you Handle guys that business. I thought was interesting too, though. Uh, and this was another DoorDash story um, that was being, so I ordered Nick the Greek a few days ago and I had, which is like one of my favorite places. <laughs> Doug's laughing at me because I- Yes, I fucking I eat out every day at least once, if not twice. And I have uh, the the dad pulls up and 
he he wait he gets out of the car and he he makes his kid bring the food over to me. Also, yeah. So he the kid, yeah. But he's this guy. You could tell what he was. He he looked like he was like tra- his son had to been somewhere between the ages of thirteen and sixteen, okay. somewhere in that range. And I think he was probably showing him how easy it is to probably make money by mm. doing something like this. Oh, okay. mm. And I was watching him uh, come up. Now, what was interesting was the kid couldn't make eye contact with me. And like he was looking at the ground when he handed me the food. And I could see his dad was kind of watching him. And as soon as he got in the car, I could tell he was like kind of coaching him before he took off and left. Yeah. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Like, you know, a, a dad probably showing his son. You know how way I mean, how cool is this? Because this didn't exist when we were kids. Like I had to go mow lawns and go do door to door type stuff totally. to, make, to make money. But man, I guess I probably would have done something like Uber or DoorDash if I was a oh, it's brilliant teenage oh, yeah. kid who's now I don't know now maybe maybe because you know like let's say you have a teenage daughter or yeah maybe even a teenage son would you feel safe for them doing that going to random houses and shit you know what I mean your sixty your seventeen year old kid well I mean going it, up to a house you, you know? I mean how dangerous is it how many people have been abducted or killed doing that. I don't know. So, I mean, statistically speaking, it's probably... Yeah, maybe I'm just being a scaredy cat. <laughs> yeah, I think you're being a little scaredy cat. Dude, that just reminds me. I read an article... Bring or actually, your kid to work day. I, I read an article that said that um, the, the title of it was, and I think it was in The Economist, I think, um, that the last... Uh, the, the person who's going to have the last driver's license has already been born. In other words... They talked about the future and how it's going to come here pretty soon. Where well, that's a trippy thought. People are not going to... Really? They think that? That soon? Automated cars, 100%. And Within dude, 16 years that we're going to... we're gonna, No one's going to drive cars anymore? People need to know... And it, the bottleneck is the laws. That's the bottleneck. But yeah. as soon as we are able to get around that, look, here, people need to realize self-driving cars are going to fundamentally change society the same way the car changed society. It's sure. going to completely change... Everything, everything about, about where's it going to start? Is it mainly going to be like freeways? You think first? I probably uh, there and also um, like truck. Uh, what is it called? Like truck drivers? Oh yeah, like truck a, drivers. You know right, where they're bringing right, right. you know freights and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But it's going to radically change everything. I was just you know I was going for a walk with Jessica and we're walking through looking at houses. And I'm thinking to myself like garages. No one. What are they? All garages are going to be converted to rooms. Every single one. Who's, you're not going to need to park a car, no. you know? I wonder if it's going to be like that. It can't, in, fi- in 16 years, Bro, that- how fast could it be? It's going to be like, you know those old movies where they like whistle for a horse, like, and then, you know, the car comes up? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. Well, that's a weird. It's totally, <laughs> well, totally going to be I'm just a, like that. That's weird. Where the fuck would that come well, from? It's a weird yeah. tech. Yeah. yeah it's just, <laughs> whistle me. Yeah. And then yeah. It comes up. Yeah. Yeah. We like to combine it's better so, than Uber. It's whistler. What do you think? Do you think something like my, my Camaro will go dramatically up in value or will it? Up. You think so? Yeah, it'll become a collector. Yeah. So well, it's already one, right? So, right. So it's think like an of, antique. Yeah, yeah. So think about it this way: um, when the car was invented, how fast did horses get replaced by cars? It was actually relatively fast. Now it was. It, 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 if you're living in that area, it seems kind of slow because you see one car, it's, then you yeah. see two, then it's just cities that just have cars. But if you go into the rural areas, everybody has horses. But then they started all having think cars. Think about as well. that. Now you got the Kentucky Derby. Now you have like these these like shows where you show off your horse mm-hmm. and prancing around. It's yep. going to be the same with cars. Well, well horses back then were probably yeah. were a lot cheaper, I'm sure. Buying a horse now is you know probably a lot more expensive than yeah. it was back then, especially if you have a really nice horse with a good pedigree or whatever. Cars got to be that way, I would assume, right. especially yeah. collector cars. Yeah, but I, but what if you can't really drive them on streets anymore because that's where all the self. I mean, would that make it more of a collector or make it more obsolete? Dude, you, it's going to be weird. I was thinking you know? about this. I was totally thinking about this. Like, what's going to happen when everything's – most cars are automated, but some of them are driven by human? Are you going to be shamed – to not drive your car because you're the you're the one that's gonna fuck up. I'm sure. You know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, you're gonna be the one getting in accidents and in, in, in fucking up traffic. Do you yeah. think it's gonna be like that, or do you think it's gonna be more like people that people driving me like fucking drones? Yeah, yeah, yeah all mad. I don't think uh, so. Yeah, maybe initially I think, but yeah, like as, as more people adopt it and the concept, of, like they're they're gonna be pissed at people that are driving themselves. Dude, it's gonna it's gonna take over. Think about how much money you spend on a car, your, your car payment maybe, or just the cost of the car itself. So if let's say you buy it outright the insurance the gas the space to park it then the, the drive time to get to places the traffic the part paying for parking all that stuff i'm really imagine if you just pay a fee car picks you up drops you off and that's it You're i'm done. really torn on this because 
one, I see the, the value in, uh, you know, being very um, Tom Billu esque, where he takes an Uber everywhere. He, I don't even know if Tom has a car. Uh, it takes an Uber everywhere because you can work, right? And yeah. I see a lot of value in that, right? If, yeah. Especially like, you know, places that I'm looking to live right now might be 20, 30 minutes of commute to get to where we're at right now. And, you know, how nice it would be to get into my, you know, self driving car and I could already start answering emails mm-hmm. and working on whatever. So, like, that 30 minutes isn't, even if it's traffic, doesn't matter to me because I'm getting work done. Mm-hmm. So, man, I see a tremendous amount of value there. I look forward to the future when I think of things like that. But then I'm also the same guy too. I actually like to. You guys know I drive every time yeah, we go anywhere. I, enjoy, enjoy I like to drive. Too. Sometimes uh, there's been times where I'm such a car guy and like driving so much that I will just go t- on a beautiful day, go take a drive with the windows down and my music blaring, sure. and just kind of take off for a half hour, hour. This I, my favorite part of going to the beach on those types of weekends is the drive to the beach. You might have to go to special places to do that. You know what I mean? So, so that part of it, I, I'm not excited about because right. you. It's almost like you lose the freedom. Well, I think I I think it's going to be such a great, a huge boom to society and the economy. Think about all the people that can't drive like kids the elderly yeah. think about the cost savings <clears throat> think about the way we we organize our cities in in parking structures and all that stuff all that space is going to be opened up think about the the reduction in uh you know carbon emissions cuz a lot of these will probably be electric vehicles that'll be parked and stored by some company and then when you call one on your phone it just bzz, drives up to you and drives you whistler. away it's going to or, or you whistle at them yeah. it's going to be um it's going to change society so and then traffic much of traffic is due to user error or to people uh driving the cars when they can all sync with each other do you know how many cars you can fit on a freeway that are just going to move in unison yeah you know, they'll and be driving they can go faster they'll be driving they, yeah. one inch to be from each other probably you'll be one inch close to the car in front of you just to pack as many cars as possible but you're all moving 80 miles an hour you know what i'm saying and oh. then easily move into the next lane it's going to be really weird, yeah, man. It's going to be trip. And the cars themselves are also driver centric. So, like, you look inside of a car, it's designed for the driver. When there is no driver, fuck, man, you get in there. It's going to be a lunch car. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to call a lunch car. I'm hungry. I'm going to eat on the way home or, you know yeah. what I mean? Whatever, you know? Well, well, I'm waiting for Roomba to create a robot to kill rats. That's, uh, <laughs> that's my next, uh, you still got problems, huh? Yeah, I do. And, uh, so, like going in my backyard and kind of like seeing wh- where like their nests potentially are. Like we found this, what looks like like an open runway, you know, towards the chicken coop. That's like, there's li- <laughs> there's li- <laughs> I'm serious. There's literally it's like packed down. Like there's no like any any kind of leaves or or twigs or anything. like it's all spread out like completely open run runway. And I looked it up and it's like, they actually have like rat runs. Like they, they create this. So it's like the most like efficient pathway towards their, uh, a feeding grounds. Those motherfuckers. Yeah, so, dude. So it, wouldn't you set traps on that or something? And now the, wouldn't that be an idea? Yeah. Yeah. They or, don't, they don't go for traps. They're, they're smarter. Oh. Like I've killed so many. Smart that rats. They, yeah. They, they, the next generation is already dude, like, if you haven't watched the secret of Nim, it's an old cartoon. You got to watch it. Sort of <laughs> yeah. You got to watch that like old cartoon. Yeah. So I, I appreciate too, like everybody that's been DMing me all these like natural ways to like handle this and all. And I've tried like a lot of these different like homemade traps and all these things. And so one of them is the, the, the one that I'm getting into right now is like I'm, I'm currently building an owl box. So I've gone with the cat direction, which by the way, the cat did not run away. It, it actually went to my neighbor's house and made a home in his garage. Oh. And you know, I'm just like, you traitor. You got Garfield. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Took off on us, dude. Like, that totally didn't pan out. So what's the owl box? So an owl box, so it's like, I For mean, it's owl. basically a bird box. But yeah, you- Well, no shit. Right. But you just make it a certain dimension so it could fit in there. And it's it looks like they, they see that as an opportunity to then, you know, obviously go in and occupy so it. So if you build an owl box, then the theory, the theory is the owl will find it and then live there. Yeah, or at least like, you know, come there, you know, occasionally, like, because it passes through. We've had owls come through before. You can hear them Dude, as owls I'm walking out. Fucking what if they're hella they're picky? They're savage, like, fucking predators. They're my favorite. Yeah. What if they're hella picky? You got to build something like super custom for them. That would suck. Yeah. yeah. He's like, yeah. this doesn't have solar. I'm there. moving along. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And the thing is, like, how high do I have to go? Because, dude, I have redwoods and those things, you can't even, like, if you if you look straight up, you can't see the top. You know? Wow. So I'm like, I'm not climbing up that shit. I'm going to have to get somebody to install it. But I'm building one now, so I'll let you know I mean, are you reading, how the owl thing goes. Are you reading up on like how you're supposed to do this? Like, Is there a theory on how high you go, how big? No, you- yeah. I, I haven't got that far. I just built the, the actual box. Dude, owls are awesome. 
They're my favorite. You know what's going to be hilarious when he builds it and like the rats burrow up in it? <laughs> you <laughs> no, see a, you see a fucking trees, rat. <laughs> I see a rat. Oh, man. Oh. Uh, Who knows? Like, everything's you... been backfiring on me so far. This is like a like a constant drama in Look, my you household. Got, you got a raccoon hanging out in that owl box. Yeah. You're going to end up attracting raccoons now. Now, that could happen because we've had them uh, come through and, and they've been a problem as well. So well do knows? raccoons eat, eat the rats or no? Are they no, friends? I don't think so. They're all friends. Yeah, they're all conspiring yeah, against us. Dude, did you guys see San Francisco's new district attorney? What he said? No. You guys, no, <laughs> no. Do we want to talk about it? This is yeah, it's just just a second. Makes Justin, me, try to angry. try to contain yourself Sorry. as I as I talk about a little bit what what's going on. San, San Francisco is a, a funny city. It's it's it it's, makes no sense. Dude, to me. it's yeah. becoming bad. Totally over. okay to be naked and shoot heroin, but you can't like Yeah, do let's it. take shits on the street. It's fine. It's yeah. getting bad over there. So you know what he said? So what he's going to do now is he's not going to prosecute prostitution. So prostitution in San Francisco will no longer be pros uh, prosecuted. Wonder what's going to happen with that. Yeah. Public urination, mm. no longer a crime, which I think is crazy. Listen. I think that's crazy. Have that they never seen Back to the Future 2? <laughs> when Biff? Biff takes over? <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's exactly what's going to happen. Yeah. He's also not going to, they're not going to say anything when someone blocks a sidewalk with a tent. So if homeless people are camping on the on Now, the are sidewalk, you taking this all out of context or is this like- No, that's li literally what said. Really? Yep. Wow. That's literally what he this said. This is interesting. Yep, yep. That's the dumbest idea I've ever heard in my well, life. Well, like now, okay, now prostitution, fine. If it's a, if it's a voluntary action between two people- you know, maybe there's some laws about where you're at or whatever. I can get that. I think the best way to handle that would be to legalize it and sanction it somewhere, like like the way that they do in Nevada. Right. Um, public urination, you got to get the fuck out. Look, if I'm with my kid and a grown man takes a piss in front of my kid, they're going to receive an ass whooping. You're attracting and inviting more bad behavior, yeah. and it's just beginning. It's this beacon now for like people to just come and, and do whatever like now, bad shit they want. What's his justification of it? Because he says he doesn't. He, are they well, spending too much money on no, trying to fight all that? No. It, he li what he's literally saying is because it's costing them money, and if the, yeah, it, what's what going to happen is if he if the, if he really does all this, then the, the it's going to get much much worse, and San Francisco is going to start losing money. People are going to start leaving. Businesses. Imagine if you have a business and there's people camping in front of your business, and oh. you can't. And, and the the cops are like, "Sorry, we can't do anything." So, about what, it. That, what's the tent law you said again? I, I yeah. it used to be team. where if you were if you were blocking the sidewalk, that the, that you would get cops would come over and say, "Hey, you need to move, or you're going to get a ticket or whatever." Nobody yeah. wants to live next to that shit. Yeah, now nobody. Now they're now they're saying they'll just leave it. And what he's saying is, is he doesn't want to criminalize poverty. Which is a very nice sentiment, and I get what he's saying. Doesn't solve the problem uh, whatsoever. It's not a solution. And what's going to cause now is a lot more people gonna, animosity. Yeah, more people migrate groups. there. Yeah, but the whole, especially the peeing in, in public. That's crazy. That you, that's like you're exposing yourself. What are you doing? Yeah. You know, yeah. lawlessness. That's weird. First question is from the Iron Princess Seventeen. Is cardio a waste of time if you're lifting heavy? Or do you suggest doing some in your workout? <laughs> you, you, know, you know why I picked this question? Because I think people get the impression that yeah. we're anti-cardio, yeah. that you should not do cardio, that it's terrible. No, didn't I just share on the show the other day that I ran? I mean, I'll, I'll do that every once in a to make sure I could still do it. That's important, you know? <laughs> I ran, you ran to the fridge? Yeah. yeah no. <laughs> no, I get on there and run a couple miles every yeah. now and then just to make sure that I could still do that. Well, here's the thing with cardio. We are anti-cardio uh, being the answer to everything. And a lot of people have overdone cardio, especially when it comes to fat loss. That's where you get into problems. But can cardio help you get stronger and build more muscle? Sure. If it improves your health? Yes. Yeah. And I actually experienced this. I experienced this in my early 20s when I was, you know, some of the, the heaviest I ever was and biggest I ever was. And I was lifting heavy and all I wanted to do was build muscle and I didn't care about anything else. And um, I remember my buddy actually made a compelling argument. He said, you know, your cardiovascular endurance and your health um, or your lack of uh, those things are preventing you from building muscle. And he says, you should try doing a little bit of cardio and you'll probably build a little bit more muscle. And so I thought, okay, I'll give this a shot. And I did. I didn't do a ton. I did like three days a week of elliptical or whatever. And at, and I was totally, totally terrible cardiovascular shape. So it took me a few weeks to get used to. And it was like 25, 30 minutes. And I did notice I got stronger in a lot of the exercise that require a lot of effort, like barbell squats. Well, yeah, you, you increase your aerobic capacity. Mm -hmm. And you do deadlifts. I mean, right now, going through the first phase of powerlift, it's 8 to 12 reps of deadlifting and squatting. Like, 
I can be gassed. Oh, totally. winded. Yeah, definitely winded from that. So uh, just me doing some cardio to increase my aerobic capacity is mm -hmm. going to carry over into my ability to get right back into another set and it not win me or gas me so yes. much. So, yeah, there's definitely benefits to it. I think that's, a, 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 you know, it is a good question to, to, I think, talk about because we have been labeled as Team No Sweat and, and you know, we've done videos on YouTube that cardio sucks for fat loss. And I think the message that we're just trying to get across is just that, is that it's not, for many, many years, it was uh, promoted as the best way to burn body fat. And it's completely the opposite. It's not the best way. In fact, it's not nowhere close to the best way to burn body fat, at least not long term. Right. Maybe sh in a short term window, like, hey, Adam, I got 14 days. I need to burn as much fat as possible. Well, yeah, running like crazy in those 14 days is going to burn a ton of calories, which then in turn can help burn fat. But it also gets you adapted to that, and to maintain that is going to be really tough for most people. You're far better off building a bunch of muscle, which will speed up your metabolism, which makes that losing body fat a lot right, easier. Right, but right. But now, if your cardiovascular fitness is really bad, um, your, your strength is going to suffer. Um, mm -hmm. If your health isn't optimal, your muscle building uh, potential is also going to suffer. And is cardiovascular capacity, does some of that improve your health? Well, yeah, it does. Now, you don't need a ton. You know, you don't need to be a, a runner or an endurance athlete. But if all you ever do is lift weights, and li especially if you, if you always lift weights like a, you know, like a strength athlete, like a power lifter, especially if you don't do things like supersets or giant sets or strip sets, which are bodybuilding techniques, but also tend to train the cardiovascular system a little bit. Like if you've ever done a lower body superset where you're going from like lunges to barbell squats, like that's going to work your cardio. But if you're training really, really heavy all the time and you're doing these long rest periods, you're going to benefit from having better cardiovascular endurance. Uh, and, I, and I mean, you're going to benefit in terms of your, your gains, mm -hmm. your strength and muscle building. Uh, I also ability. just don't like to lose abilities. You know, yeah. if, I, if, I, if I've been neglecting it too long and, and I know, you know, I'm not, involved in like highly competitive sports anymore but even just like daily activities or playing with my kids or uh you know coaching or doing anything else, like i'm still moving and mm -hmm. and like i don't want to be the guy out there just like completely gassed because i haven't even given it any attention so it's definitely something that i make sure that i i, I have that as, as something i i you know intermittently will throw in because it's very important to me that I maintain certain abilities as I age. Dude, years ago, I, I let my cardio get so bad. I was I was in a competition with uh, one of my top trainers and my fitness manager. This was back when I was running uh, Santa Teresa. Mm. And the competition was to see who could put on the most, gain the most size. Yeah. And we were all young dudes and meatheads. And so we would lift weights together. And then we would just eat, and we would eat anything to get as many calories as possible. And this is when I got my body weight over a little over 240 pounds. And I, I'm a six foot tall guy. I don't have a massive frame. I weigh 212 right now, so it's another 30 pounds on my body. Much of it not muscle because we were just packing the food back. And I was this really, really big, heavy dude. And I remember at the end of the competition, you know, we all tallied who gained the most weight and. You know, and you know, whatever. And uh, the joke was at the end of it that we were all going to get on a stationary bike because we're like, at the end of this, we all need to do a little bit of cardio just to see what happens. So we all get on a stationary bike, the three of us, and we're all like, bro, ten minutes into it, I was, we were gassed. We were breathing from a stationary of bike. Course. My front desk was talking so much shit. They were making announcements about the three gorillas on the on the cardio. <laughs> Everybody, come here, come look, come to the zoo, come look at the three gorillas. But we were dying ten minutes. It was terrible. I have a similar story. I, uh, I was same thing. It was this was the the biggest bulk I'd ever been on. Um, I was you know weighing first thing in the morning at two thirty five. Throughout the day, I was definitely pushing two forty. And uh, this was also the same time that I was just getting into uh, starting up boot camps. And you know, my boot camps were predominantly like, you know, people uh, above the age of fifty, right? So most of advanced age clients. Uh, for the most part, most of them pretty deconditioned. Uh, every once in a while, I had one or two athletic people, but for the most part, pe most people were really just everyday people. Yeah, and even more advanced aged and overweight, right? So they weren't, they're not moving fast, is where I'm get going with this. And, you know, part of the, you know, I would do this, you know, dynamic warm up with them, and then we'd run one lap around the track, is what I'd have them do. 
and uh, they were all kind of razzing me about how big and big I was getting and stuff like that. And like, oh, you got to run with us. And of course, I'm not going to like, you know, act like I can't do a single lap with my my clients. You're not going to do the old, oh, my knee hurts. Right, right. But I hadn't done I hadn't done anything at this point in a long time because in order for me to push that kind of weight, I had to like I tried not to move. Like I was like intentionally not moving as much as I could throughout the day so I could pack the calories on because it was so hard for me to push my weight that high. Uh, that's how aggressively I was bulking. And I'll never forget that lap. And I remember inside being like, oh my God, I have to pretend like this isn't killing me right now. But my shins were on fire. I was like gasping. And I'm like jogging in front of all of them. And it's like a light jog one time around. And I remember that was a flat. Oh yeah. Like never again will I be this bad, dude. It was so bad. (laughs) Next question is from Jeans Wu. What are the benefits and disadvantages of doing a barbell complex versus doing straight sets? So a barbell complex would like a be, circuit. Yeah, like like they're using the example of like deadlift for five reps, row for five reps, clean for five reps, press for five reps. I don't necessarily like the combination of exercises. I definitely don't know if I like would put a row with a deadlift yeah. right away. But I get the idea, right? It's doing, you know, five exercises back to back. You could call it a circuit. Uh, lower reps, they tend to call it a, a complex, but it's really exercises back to back. Now, what are the advantages? Uh, the advantages are- time. That's you, yeah, all I can think of. Well, you, and you burn a lot of calories in a shorter period of time, right? Yeah, so yeah. if you do a 30-minute you know, resistance training hit type workout or circuit type workout, you know, MAPS hit is like this, for example. MAPS hit, these are, these are complexes that are 20 minutes long, and you just burn a lot of calories in a short period of time. So for short-term fat loss, it can be very, very effective. Now, for long-term muscle building- not as effective. Straight sets are straight sets are your bread and butter. You know what I mean? That's your like. This is what I usually do. And there's variety, you know, versions of straight sets. I mean, I'm not a fan of it at all. And I know that it does model our our hit program. But even our hit program is the only program that w- comes with a warning. And we warn people not to get stuck in training this right. way forever. It's just not ideal for somebody who wants it's like to an interrupter. Yeah, it's yeah. a great interrupt. Exactly, it's a great interrupter. This is a great thing to do. This is an example of something that I would do uh, in that that one off time that I have only twenty or thirty minutes, mm-hmm. and I want to get a really good workout. You'll get a good workout from that. But the the benefits of doing all those movements that are that the, the, this person has listed as straight sets. Oh my god. Uh, far more beneficial. Totally, you're, you're getting totally. so much more out of those extra. Those are those are such great exercises stand alone. That after you deadlift five times and row five times, by the time you get to clean, you're probably maybe cleaning fifty percent of the weight that you potentially could do uh, five by five if they were straight sets. And like, really, it's about right. energy systems of the body that you're training. Because I've had people ask me, "It's like why rest? Like what's it? I'm still lifting weights." Well, it, your the energy systems that you use predominantly when you're working out are what drive or part of what drive the adaptation, right? So, when you do a straight set, you're working with the, you know, the the ATP system. You're not dipping into, you know, glycolysis or glycogen too much like you would when you're doing these. And now, what does that mean for the average person listening? Who's like, what the fuck does that mean? Okay, one of them leads to strength and muscle building adaptation. The other one is more of an endurance building adaptation. And endurance doesn't require a lot of strength. And in fact, if you push endurance too long, your body actually becomes more efficient with calories, uh, aka metabolism may actually start to slow down a little bit. This is why if you do lots of all you ever do is cardio or all you ever do are circuits, you'll burn a lot of calories while doing the, the workout, but your metabolism actually slows down uh, for the rest of the day or the days that you, you don't work out. So, but in, in for short periods of time, they could be phenomenal fat burning workouts. Like, let's say you're 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 normally consistent with your workouts. You've been working out for a long time, and you're like, oh, I got you know five weeks until you know Mexico. I'm gonna go to Mexico, and I want to look really good in five weeks. Well, throwing in quite a bit of these type of workouts in that five week period with a good diet, you're gonna get cut uh, much faster. You're gonna burn more body fat, you know, yeah. much faster. I used to do these like uh, barbell complexes, but I, I mean, never more than two weeks, like max. Like I, I would, I would throw them in as their own emphasis is is my kind of version of cardiovascular, but higher intensity cardio. Uh, and, and really, I was trying to mimic it to uh, apply. CrossFit. Yeah, I just love CrossFit, and I wanted to do anything <laughs> close to it as possible. Uh, this is before CrossFit, but uh, it was really just to get these these quick bursts, these powerful bursts and, and try and withstand 
you know, like being being able to uh, like elongate that a bit, so I could still like mimic what time length I was I was applying towards the field. So if I was like in a play, I'm going to be in a play for uh, you know. 10, 15, 20 second, you know, bouts of like a of musical high intense. Like a musical play? Yeah, like a musical play. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, like like a, a wicked. Yeah. It's one of my favorite ones. Uh and we would dance and <laughs> really intensely. <laughs> football. Football, dude. Oh, that kind of play. Oh, yeah, okay, football okay. play. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So uh I see benefit for that. Like if if you're uh, you know, in that type of a sport where um, you know, you are doing totally high intense bouts, but you're you're trying to extend your endurance within totally that. performance. Performance would be another one. Now, here's the thing, and I've always told this to athletes: the best performance gains you're going to get that are specific to your sport are done practicing your sport. Now, here's the problem with the right. game with football: Justin can't just go practice a bunch of plays, uh, you know, in order to get his conditioning up because he has to rely on other players. So everybody has to meet at the same time. And at some point, it's going to beat you up too much. So how is he going to train that type of performance, endurance, and stamina, but also not tackle and, and beat his body up because he's already practiced X amount of time this week? Well, this would be a good uh, kind of a good strategy. Um, now, that being said, there's a lot of sports where that's not the case. There's, I've, I've had people who are like runners and rowers who are like, oh, I'm going to do a lot of weights to improve my stamina, and I'm going to do my, my weights in a way that improves endurance. Like, no, no, no. Make get yourself strong with the weights. Just run more. If you can run more, just run more. That would be the best way to do right, it. But, at the end of your workout or before. Right? Yeah, but yeah. when it comes to something like football, it makes perfect sense. It's yeah. like there's only so many times you could do you know plays where you're tackling each other uh, before your body just starts to just get beat up. But may, maybe you have the capacity to do the workout. Then do that. Next question is from T Got Soul. Do you really need to eat multiple times a day to see gains? I eat two big meal, meals and one shake a day to meet my macros. Is that okay? I train five to six days a week. Yeah, this, this, so years ago, um, this was never a thing. Um, people ate, uh, you know, two or three times a day. It was just part of culture. Typically, it was to, you know, break the day up type of deal. So you took a break at lunch and that's what you have that. And then dinner was with your family. Breakfast was, in some cultures, they didn't have any breakfast. In other cultures, they had some. Um, and that was pretty much it for a long time. Then you had strength athletes who started to figure out that the, that the more they ate, the stronger they would get and the more muscle they would build. Well, some of these guys were consuming, you know, four or five, 6,000 calories a day. That gets difficult to do with two or three meals. You know, if you eat three meals and you're eating 6,000 calories, those are 2,000 calorie meals each time. It's a huge meal. It is, and that's it's going to bog you down, and it's just it just doesn't make sense. So what they would do is they would start to split these meals up and they found that it was easier to digest, to digest it was easier on their on their bodies and so rather than having you know 3 2000 calorie meals maybe they had 6 you know 1000 calorie meals or 700 calorie meals or whatever but then you know as this started happening they would talk about it and people said oh you know that's the way that guy eats so that's the way I need to eat as well to make gains supplement companies got a hold of this and thought what a brilliant way to sell protein powder and meal replacement shakes because the average person is going to hear the message that I need to eat five times a day, but the average person isn't going to make five meals. So they're going to, what they're going to do is eat their normal two or three meals, throw in some shakes or some whatever. And it became this whole thing about like eating small meals burns more calories, builds more muscle. You need protein all day long or your muscles start to deteriorate or it speeds up your metabolism because of the thermic effect and all this other stuff. Total, complete bullshit. Um, at the end of the day, it's all personal preference. Do you think that? Down. Do you think that there's some, somewhat though, of um, got to be kind of a, a sweet spot though for each individual? Like, and why I'm saying this is the digestive system is probably like every other system of the body, and you could probably overdo it just like anything else. Totally. Just like we could overtax our our uh, muscular system by training too hard mm -hmm. or our CNS, right? So. If if that's the case, like, you know, if somebody who has like, let's say, um, you know, 2,500 calorie maintenance, like that's what they need to eat. And so that divided up over two big meals and a shake, probably not that big of a deal. 900 to 1,000 calories. Mm -hmm. It's not probably putting a ton of stress on the digestive system. But, you know, what about what do you think about someone who's trying to fit, you know, 5,000 or 4,000 calories in two or three meals and consuming 2,000 calories, especially if you're eating 2,000 calories of good calories, that's a lot of probably volume as mm -hmm. far as food. 
on the digestive system all at once. I would think, especially if you have habits of doing that and then sitting down at a desk or not getting up and moving around, something, I mean, I just feel like common sense says that also would not be the most ideal way to eat too. Even if, if and, and here's the thing, I know already because I've read the studies that what I'm saying is not supported. Like if it comes, because they'll measure things like building muscle. If we just measure, uh, you know, if you hit your macros, whether you hit it in one meal or six meals, the science shows that it doesn't make a difference. But then I wonder about like how how healthy or how ideal is that for my digestive system right. if I'm stressing it with so much food in such a short period of time? And would it be better like training, you know, smaller doses more frequently uh, as far as on the stress level, and is there? Do you think there is a sweet spot for each individual? Yeah. So, this, so this, yes, the extreme, both extremes are not good. So, eating too much at once, we've all done that. That's obviously not good. Eating too frequently has also been shown to increase inflammation in the body and cause uh, digestive issues, especially in people who already have gut issues. So, I'm like this. So, when I'm having gut issues, eating less frequently, way better than eating uh, more frequently. More frequently really uh, messes me up. But there's a limit, right? Like, sure, eating less frequently might be better for my gut, but what if I you know, do it so infrequently that I'm eating you know, 5,000 calories in a meal or whatever? Well, then that can definitely cause a problem. Now, evolution, you know, evolutionarily speaking, humans probably ate food when it was around, which meant we probably ate a little bit here and there by finding it. So there's this edible plant, there's this whatever, but not much. But then when we did kill something, we probably ate a lot of it. I don't, you know, we didn't have refrigerators and, you know, stuff like that. And so we probably ate until we were full. Um, and then, you know, we ate again when we were full and then the meat was gone. And now we probably went for long periods without food. This is why fasting shows that, you know, that it's got some, some health benefits. Um, but as far as the, the, what we were sold for so long, and this to me was the biggest, like shocking paradigm shattering moment for me in all of my fitness career. This was one of the first dominoes that fell. And the reason why I call it a domino is because when I realized that this was false, you know, the myth that you have to eat small meals throughout the day because it speeds up your metabolism. You have to, your muscles have to have protein all day long. Uh, otherwise they'll start to cannibalize themselves. I believe that wholeheartedly for a long time. We were told that by, mm -hmm. Courses that we took, we were told that by obviously supplement oh, companies, yeah, magazine. Yeah, I always everything. had protein bars in my pocket, to so I was so uh, afraid every that two hours muscle would fall. I go to the bar. gas station just to get a bar. Exactly, yeah, yeah. and and I was so bought into this, and I sold it so much to clients. You know, I used to tell clients, "There's only one athlete that eats once a day." You know, the sumo wrestler, and look how fat they are. I used to have these like great presentations selling this to people for so I, I bought into it. When I finally started to look into the science, which was years later. I started to you know, think to myself, like, this doesn't sound right. Like, are these guys full of shit? Then I started experimenting with my own diet and realized it was complete bullshit. And it was the first domino because once that one fell, then I started to question all the what I thought were truths uh, in the stuff that I did. And I started to realize that a lot of them weren't, weren't true. And at the end of the day, it just boils down to this. It's personal preference. You oh, know, yeah. it's like what works great for you and that's it. At the end of the day, it's like food quality calories and macros kind of make the most sense and don't eat too close to bedtime and there's really not, not much else. I think figuring that out like your your own digestive needs like what what works best for you that's not going to impede on your sleep that's not going to impede on your training and like detract you from energy and throughout the day that's all the kind of shit you got to figure out and then whatever structure works best for that is what you apply. Next question is from Xavier San 5 is it awkward when someone asks just one of you to be on their podcast? <laughs> that's, <laughs> Who picked this? That's a, that's, no, yeah, no. It's a, that's actually the only way we do it. Yeah. Uh, we won't do a virtual podcast with all three of us because it's uh, well, one, it's, we've, we've tried. Well, it's a, a couple times. things. One, uh, you know, we've in, uh, we've instructed Brianna and uh, and Anne, whoever you're, whoever they're communicating with when they're trying to get uh, one of us on the show, is that. Uh, it just it's easier because we're all doing different projects. So when we're not we're podcasting together, then the rest of the day we're off doing different things related to Mind Pump. And so uh, to get all three of us together to do a, a podcast uh, really kills us business wise when we're all trying to do other things. So um, we wouldn't do that anyways altogether. Not to mention 
well, like what Justin was saying is it, it's, it sounds terrible when we when we do a virtual uh, with all three of us. There's a lot of talking over and it doesn't sound yeah. good. You so know, and, too much lag. And besides that, the reason why I, I picked this question was because, um, you know, I have never worked with a team that works or worked with partners that work so cohesively uh, with each other and trust each other and, you know, are able to do work with their strengths and allow the other guys or team members to work with their strengths. Um, and so it's never awkward. It's never awkward. If there's ever a yeah. situation where one of us uh, is obviously the person that should be doing it, not only do they do it, all of us are happy that they're doing it, and then the person doing it is proud that they have the opportunity to do something for their team. And and this, to me, is one of the reasons why I, I think this is what makes uh, a team successful because when it starts to feel awkward, I think that's when you start to have egos and who's the, what, what's and insecurities happening, and stuff. which is absolutely ridiculous. There's so much stuff that happens behind the scenes too that people don't realize. Where you know, if you may see one of us on podcasts, that doesn't mean one of us is doing. There's so much stuff that happens here, and it's handled uh, independently by each of us, and typically uh, around all of our strengths. Um, and I, I mean, if I get the opportunity to be on a podcast uh, by myself, I feel so proud to be able to do something for my team. Like I get to do this to pay these guys back for the shit that they do that I don't, you know, contribute to. And I think this is the attitude that this is the only attitude you can have for long-term in my opinion success with a team. Otherwise it gets it gets it can be a little a little weird, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think too. I think it's uh sometimes it's refreshing for me to do that. Um not that I don't I mean I love doing this all of us together. But they're the the it's different being interviewed by yourself than it is with the dynamic of the three of us. There's there's a there's something about the three of us together that that's what makes the show mind pump what it is. And then there's some there's something to be said about interviewing each one of us individually. You get just something totally different. So it's also a nice change of pace. So it's a nice change of pace. Uh, it's good practice for uh, for each each of us. And it's the way we have it structured and set up. So someone wouldn't even have the option. So there's a lot of people. So I'm sure this person's saying this or asking this because you know they probably see us on our stories always sharing like oh this is an interview and it's oh it's just me or they see yeah. oh just sal or oh just justin it's like no we we set it up that way that uh, so sometimes people ask they would like to interview all of us matter of fact most people reach out and ask for that and you know the way we have told our team is just like it's too tough to try and coordinate all three of us to sit down an hour and our and our goal was to try and if someone wants us to be on the show we try our best to get get on it as many as we possibly can and do that um so it's a lot easier for us to divide and conquer than it is for us to try and coordinate yeah no and that, that's a good point too um none of us were media you know guys uh when we started this we had no experience with media um so practice for us is it's a, oh, yeah. it's a great opportunity so I, I, I never turn down podcasts. I don't care mm -hmm. how small they are. As long as I can fit in the schedule, right, I'll get on it because it's more practice. It's more practice. It's more practice. And I feel like that's really the only way that we're ever going to be competitive with, you know, professional media experts, you know, who are, who are – here's the deal with fitness. Like, you know, we have the advantage because we know fitness very, very well. But when it comes to media, you know, there's media experts out there that, you know, I like a guy like Max Lugavier, dude, super smart, great guy. He's got a lot of experience on camera. When I watch him on camera, I'm just like, oh, this guy is so polished. Yeah. And it's, it, I can't compete with him. The only way I'll ever get that good it, or have an a chance to is if I practice, 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 practice as much as possible. So it's a, it's a great opportunity. And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download some of our free content. We've got a bunch of free books and guides on there that you can check out. You can also find all of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.